have you ever felt bad for Ronnie Coleman? And you know, because obviously he's also an eight-time Mr. Olympia, but he's been dealing with a lot of surgeries and back problems. Have you ever, have you ever felt bad for him? You know, looking at you know what happened to him later. Obviously, he's still you know he's good and he he's still going through surgeries. And he's still training. You know what I mean? But have you ever felt bad for him? Well, you know something, uh, all of us, our hearts are tied together. Mm. You know, one of us, none of us want to see uh, uh, former athletes. Uh, our Conrad's uh, dealing with pain and surgeries, that sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, man, my heart go out to Ronnie. Ronnie's a dear friend of mine. I talked to him on the over the telephone. You know, he used my detox programs. You know, and when I want when I want to ask him about something, say, Ronnie, what do you think about this or that? He's always made himself available, just as I've made myself available for him. You know, Ronnie's mindset and the mindset of any Olympian, we are gladiators. Gladiator, in the Roman times, we fought to the death. We were just made that way. We're not your normal people. We don't do normal things. We do a lot of abnormal things. So Ronnie took weight training, strength, to a whole nother level in the field of bodybuilding. You know, would I have done it? I did what I needed to do during my era to create a physique that was, that was, let's say that was representative of my era. I see myself as a combination of Robbie Robinson, Arnold, Roy Callender, you know, physiques such as that. That's who I am. And that what was, that's what was asked of me during my time as Mr. Olympia. Ronnie came along in an era which you had Durin Yates, which was larger than myself. Durin didn't have the tiny waist like I did, the lines as I did, but Durin was a mass monster. So the, the size of the physique started to change. And so Durin was the first of that. And Ronnie was a, another level larger and bigger than Durian. So each of them believed in using heavy weights in order to get the results because the body works in the way of demand and supply, demand and supply. If you're asking your body to produce uh, a larger muscle, you have to physically give it a greater physical demand. And that's what, uh, that's what Durian did. That's what Ronnie did. Ronnie took it to a whole nother level, a level that was somewhat dangerous, unheard of. But that's who Ronnie is. That's who he is. And he's a gladiator. So if that was another level to reach, Ronnie would have reached it. You've heard him say many times. The only thing that he regret that he didn't do is more of what he did. That's the mindset of a gladiator. So he's different. My the utmost respect for Ronnie. Ronnie is different. He is in a league of his own. And we don't apologize for what he did, nor do I think he need to. He was the best at the best in his era. And that always stand. Absolutely. Do you remember um, when you first saw Dorian Yates' physique for the first time? What was your initial thought about him? Well, Dorian had, he had size. He had great shape. Uh, and he was a good looking guy, too. So all of those things were playing in his favor. Um, I knew that his physique needed to mature a little bit more. I mean, after all, that I was, that was my eighth Mr. Olympia. So I was much more polished because I had much more time to develop my physique. You know, the years of maturity, most maturity uh, I had. But I love the, the package that Dorian brought. Uh, was very, very good. He looked great. He had a good look about him. His personality Durin is not as smiley and talkative as I am, but he had the strength about his smile that I love and still admire today. So he was an awesome competitor. Hey, I did my last one, and I was happy I did my last one. No, I didn't want to get into any further fights with Durin. <laughs> I recall we were in Atlanta, and we were sitting having a bike to eat a little chat, and Durin looks at me and said, uh, Lee, y'all, what do you think about us going at it one more time? I said, and you lost your mind. <laughs> I'm going fishing, man. Forget that. 
Did you did you envision him to be the the next reigning champion for the next six years? Did you see that in him? Who is that? Dorian. Dorian. Yeah, Dorian Yates. Dorian Yates. Did you see him uh, taking over the Olympia after you for so many years? Also, did you see that? Oh, did I envision that? Did you envision that? Yeah, when you first competed against him. Well, you know something. It all depends on what the judges were looking for, and I think after Dorian won that first Mr. Olympia. Hmm. A, the statement had been made, okay, we're looking for mass and size. Mm. And there was nobody at that particular time was as big as Dorian, mm -hmm. although there were guys with fantastic shape that uh, that I thought that, that looked great. You know, you had uh, Kevin LeVarone, you mm -hmm. had Sean Ray, you had... Uh, I think Chris Cremier, mm -hmm. Flex Wheeler, yeah. you know, and again, those were a different type of physique. So it all depends, and it depended largely upon where bodybuilding wanted to go at that time, and that was mm -hmm. totally in the hands of the judges. Sure. Mine was more of a classic style physique. That's where Flex Wheeler came from. That's where Sean Ray came from. Mm -hmm. That's where Chris Cremier came from. But all of a sudden, bodybuilding was saying something different after my era and that's where Doring was.